Good afternoon. My name is Kim Rudat. I'm the Regional Communications Manager for the Wisconsin Department of Transportation here in the Northeast region. Welcome you here this afternoon. As Governor Walker promised, we were going to come back and report to you within 24 hours, and we are. We'll try to give you everything that we've got so far today. Um, we're getting, first of all, a lot of calls from the media, and trust me, we're trying to get back to you as quickly as we can. We've added some staff, and uh, we hope to get most of your questions answered by the end of the day. Uh, we have a short presentation, the same format as we did yesterday. There's going to be a short presentation uh, following that. We'll take some uh, Q&A, and then we'll be available for individual interviews. We'd like you to hold your questions until we, we're done with our presentation. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items here. First of all, the last bridge inspection, we handed these inspections out to you yesterday, um, and we noted that the date on the inspection date is October and not August, and that is correct. It was inspected in October of 2012. Um, some of you have been asking for the video from our traffic cameras yesterday. We will have that available to you after the news conference. Just see Randy Asman, Randy, and Randy will fix you up with that video. We also have what Mark tells us is terrific video because he went out and he did that video this morning. We managed to get out on the bridge. And Mark, how are you going to have that video available? Uh, the DVDs of the video should be here by the time the press. Okay. Mark. Okay. Okay. Just one thing, as we go forward here, I want to remind you that the Leo Frigo Bridge is a complex structure, structural and geotechnical system. And frankly, over the last 33 years, it has been subject to both weather and extensive use. That said, uh, in answer to another question, when we build these bridges, we build them to last for 70 years. Um, I can report to you that it appears to be too based on South End. The good news is as of this morning, we haven't detected any further movement in Pier 22 or in the adjacent piers, Pier 21 or Pier 23. As the governor stated yesterday, we're determined to expedite this investigation as to what caused this issue and how to fix it. We've assembled a team of state experts from the department's Bureau of Structures and Bureau of Technical Services also from this region and federal highway staff is also coming on board. They've already had a meeting this morning and we're developing a plan of action. Now, as part of that plan of action, I'm going to introduce to you, uh, we've already named the project manager for this project. His name is Tom Buchholz. He's also a PE. Tom's had 23 years of department, uh, has been with the department for 23 years. He's had extensive construction and design experience and many of you have probably uh, come across him before because he did manage our US 41 capacity expansion project in Winnebago County, a $450 million project. He did an outstanding job. He also helped uh, manage uh, the building of the Winnebago Wisconsin <coughs> Street Bridge in Oshkosh and also uh, helped the, the reconstruction of Highway 110. You want to sign up just for a minute just so they see who you are? Okay. He's coming on board just today and uh, he'll be able to talk to you up ahead. As part of the team, we also have Bill Dreyer. Bill's also a PE. Bill's had 27 years with the department and he's currently our structures design chief. He's gonna talk to you a little bit today about the investigation and what's coming up ahead. Bill? Mark, can you take pictures? Okay. Thanks, Kim. First of all, we've assembled a team of state, region, and local engineers to assess the situation and move forward in addressing it in an expedited manner. Federal Highway Administration is fully engaged with us and has offered the full use of their resources to the DOT. We've already got several national experts on site from Federal Highway, and they've committed to providing whatever additional resources we might need. 
We're also bringing a consultant on board with extensive national experience. That consultant will lead the forensic investigation to find out what caused the event, whether the bridge is stable at this time, and if it's not stable, what we need to do to make sure it is stable as we go forward with repairing it. We're also going to have to determine what parts of the bridge can stay and what can be removed. That'll come as part of that investigation. Some of the things we'll be looking at as we move forward include how far the structure is settled and whether it or not it continues to move, what parts of the structure have been affected and how they've been affected, and we'll be researching plans from the original construction as well as maintenance and inspection reports and investigations that have occurred since then. And obviously we'll be doing multiple visual uh, inspections. So depending on what we find, that will dictate how long this investigation will take. But I can say we're bringing forward all resources as necessary to expedite this, in, this, this inspection and find out what happened and get it solved. Um, at this time, I'll, I'll uh, direct you to this schematic just to give you an idea what the pier consists of. It's called a double hammerhead pier. Uh, the top here, the pier cap is what supports the superstructure, the beams, the deck, the surface that the, the traffic rides on. There are two shafts coming down from the pier cap which are supported on footings. This pier has a strut that's running between the footings and the footings are then supported on deep steel piling that are driven down to a hard layer or possibly rock approximately 100 feet down. So you can see the footing is about it is six feet deep and the total pier is 82 feet high. We've also got some photographs of the bridge that I'm going to run through now. Um, this is a photo from the side of the bridge and you can see the definite sag at pier, 20, pier 22. This is a picture from on the bridge with some of our inspectors going out to take a look. You can see the, the, again the sag across uniformly across the entire width of the bridge. Another photo where you can, that, that sag is very pronounced. From underneath, a little bit hard to see, but this is the pier in question. Again, the double shaft and the, the hammerhead pier. This is a picture of the actual top of footing down below um, at the ground level. And you can see the dark area on the right side of the screen there is where that footing actually moved vertically downward. Another picture at that pier, you can see along the edge there, you get an idea of how much it went down. Again, 22 inches on one side and 27 inches on the other. This is one of the, the cracks that opened up in the soil as a result of that whole mass moving downward. So, as I mentioned, we've got a great team put together that's going to be to working Mike, forward. Please, Thank you. We've got a great, strong team put together to move forward with addressing this issue. We'll be bringing in national experts as, as far as consultants and as well as the uh, Federal Highway Administration. And as we've said, we're going to be moving with extreme urgency to try to get this thing solved and taken care of as soon as possible. Sure, you all have a lot of questions for Bill, and he'll be back in just a little bit. But first of all, we want to give you an update on traffic, how traffic is moving out there. And for that, I'm going to ask our traffic engineer, Randy Asman. Randy probably is going to be stepping over here to, to point a few things out. But Randy, come on. Thankfully, um, this morning went pretty smooth. Um, last evening did it as well. Um, it, it's great to see. The message got out very quickly, and we appreciate your help and everyone else's help um, making our system, our highway system, uh, work as best as we can. As we told you yesterday, we're promoting the use of Highway 41 to Highway 172 to bypass the bridge, okay? 
40,000 cars a day need to go somewhere. And they obviously all cannot go to 172. They also cannot all go downtown Green Bay. So what we need is, you know, we need that balance to take place over the next, the next few days, and we, and we know it will shake out. History shows that those sorts of things happen when you have a major, a major closure like this. So, for instance, today, you know, there were some backups on 41 around, around the Highway 29 and Valp area. Um, so, again, give yourself some time on how long it's going to take you to get to your destination. Uh, this afternoon, approximately an hour or so ago, there was an incident on Highway 172 at, at Riverside. As a result of flat tires, stalled vehicles, crashes, and so on, those sorts of things now are going to have major backups in a, in a quick amount of time. It's not going to take long for us to see the impacts of traffic that's moved from the bridge to our alternate routes and what those in incidents can cause. Uh, regarding the, the alternate route through the, through the city on the, on the north side, it's working pretty good. Um, last night, you know, there was, a, there was a ship that went through and a train or two or three that went through that caused some additional concerns and some additional backups. Uh, this morning, things went, went pretty well. I talked to Green Bay PD this morning and there's some few minor things that they're going to continue to tweak. All in all, it went pretty good. We want to make sure, again, if you don't have a need as, as a, as a over-the-road over the typical semi-truck driver, if you don't have a need to go downtown Green Bay and through all those tight turns, you know, stay on the freeway if you can. Um, so again, we, we ask for the, 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 the public's cooperation, their, their um, assistance in, in helping us make this better. Um, don't forget, there's three other river crossings in Green Bay as well. So those will have to be utilized maybe more than they were in the past to help take some of that pressure off of Highway 172 and, and Main Street. So we'll continue. Um, I talked to Green Bay PD this afternoon. We will continue to talk to them to get updates on, on what they see and observe as well as what we're observing with our 20 highway cameras uh, in the area to help divert traffic. So that's, that's the update for today. What, you've, uh, what you're seeing up on the board now is a website that we just put up. It's uh, on our 511 system. And I would like to recommend citizens who want to uh, ask questions or, or, or make comments to please use this website. Uh, please don't email us or call us. We're getting a ton of emails, a ton of calls, a lot. And we think this is going to work a little better for everybody so that we can manage what we're receiving. So if you could uh, please publicize this website, we'll also be putting it out in a news release. Um, do want to remind you, remind your viewers, nobody needs to be on that bridge. Nobody should be walking on that bridge. Please be, stay clear of the bridge, stay clear of the piers. Um, as far as the next news conference is concerned, we will have another news conference, but only when we have, when we have significant information to report. I don't see that happening tomorrow. That could be happening as early as Monday, but probably later in the week, Tuesday or Wednesday. If uh, we get some items that come up that we need to get out more quickly, we'll certainly uh, send them to you. I'm going to be available all weekend if you need to talk to somebody. Um, and with that, I'm ready to take some questions. If, uh, if it sank, um 22 inches on one side, 27 inches on the other side. Are you referring to the two different shafts going down? Yeah, Bill, could you come up here? And sure. The information we've got so far is from shooting lasers at the ends of these ends of the pier cap to get relative movement from one end to the other. So the 22 would be on one side and the 27 would be on the other. No, no. One thing I just wanted to clarify is right now that's taken from a distance. So it's, it's pretty accurate, but you know, it, there's a little bit of a margin of error in there too. So, but we're confident that there is somewhat of a, a differential movement between the two sides. Does that mean it's then leaning to one end? A little right? bit. But when we look at the superstructure, based on that, we would expect to see the girders maybe moved off of their bearings a little bit. And we haven't seen that, at least from a distance. So. We're still trying to kind of piece this all together, but it doesn't look like it's affected the superstructure laterally at this point. Does that though, uh, raise the possibility of instability though in the overall structure? Well, it could potentially, but at this point, based on what we're seeing over time, we're not seeing any movement. So, you know, we're, we're pretty confident at this time that it's stable. If, I would imagine it would put some strain 
thing, though, on some connections and some joints that it's, you know, because that piece is connected to other parts of the brain. Very potentially. Correct, and that's when we'll bring in the, our, our experts and the consultants to start looking at that kind of thing, get measurements, uh, run analyses and things like that to see what kind of stresses and strains it's put into the bridge. Uh, Bill, for the average person, it would look like this bridge and the home are of the same design. Is that design, this bridge design, obsolete? No, um, the portion of the, uh, of the home bridge that, that failed is totally different than what we're looking at here. This is all based on the settlement, at least from what we know at this time, of this pier moving, which is nothing like what happened at the home. So what are some theories that have you know, been bouncing around you know, like what possibly could have happened? I don't think we're far enough along there to start offering theories or conjectures, maybe by next week, but uh, there's a lot of talk, but nothing really, uh, to coin a phrase concrete, shall we say, that we'd really like to share right now. Who's going to end up we're getting that question a lot, and, and, and I guess first of all, I want to go back to what uh, Governor Walker said yesterday, and he said, we're going to find out what's wrong, and we're going to fix it, and we're going to expedite this. That's what we're focusing on. The Federal uh, Highway Administration has been here. They're working with us. They want to offer their resources, um, getting terrific cooperation. To be honest with you, we don't know right now how the money's going to shake out, but it will once we come up with a plan to fix it. Right now, the idea is to look at the bridge, find out what's wrong, make sure it's stable, come up with a plan to fix it, and then fix it. So I, I, I don't have an answer for you on, on the money, but when we need it, it's going to be there. Do you guys have a timeline right now, how long you're gonna keep measuring you know, the stability to see if it moved at all, and I guess you know, when you could potentially stop doing that and take another action? I'm hoping next week that we'll have an answer to you as to just how long this investigation is going to take. Uh, in the meeting this morning, among many, uh, there's no question that there's a sense of urgency. And we don't want to, we want to do the job right, but we don't want to spend a lot of time trying to figure this out. But we're going to do what we have to do. We've got plenty of resources, we're going to move it along. I'm hoping we can give you a better idea next week. I just cannot at this time. There was a mention yesterday of this uh, shift of about 20, between 22 and 27 inches that had happened sometime within a 12 hour period between 9 p.m. and 4 a.m. Is that still accurate or is there any way to know if this was something that had been happening for more than just since overnight? Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't, I don't have anything that would change that, I guess. No, I, we, as far as we know, it, again, it wasn't reported until um, what did we say yesterday? Uh, shortly before five in the morning, and um, earlier that evening, we've heard from uh, drivers that they did not detect anything. So we're still working on trying to identify just when that event happened. But we think it happened over a very short period of time, uh, perhaps a, a couple of hours. Have you been in discussions with anybody that handles shipping traffic on the Fox River? We have um, this. This is not over the Fox River, and so it should not affect shipping at all. I know there's a lot that you still don't know, but have you been able to rule anything out yet? Bill, have we been able to rule anything out? I, I, don't, I don't think we could say that at this point. I mean, really what we're looking at is the pier, the pier moving and, and creating this issue with the dip in the superstructure. But you know, until we get more information, I just don't know that we can rule anything out. How do you evaluate the stability of the pier underneath there? Do you like do bore holes to check out the bedrock? And how do you evaluate the piers near there to see if it's a ground problem or it's just that one pier? How do you find that? That's out? what we're gonna bring in the experts to help us determine. We wanna make sure it's stable first and then we'll decide from there what we can do to get in there and check it out without creating more instability or something like that. So we're really gonna rely on some experts to help us with that. Any plans to inspect any of the other bridges throughout the city? No, we don't have any plans for that right now. Again, this is a very unique event. Um, we do inspect all our bridges regularly, including this one. Uh, we don't see a need for that. But I will say that anytime there's a bridge event in the country, uh, everyone does take notice, the DOTs, public works, and that sort of thing. 
And they do kind of go through their list and go, hey, I wonder if I got a bridge like that here. Maybe I need to take a look at. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of interest uh, from bridge experts around the country as to what we find and how we, and how we fix this bridge. How comfortable are you? I know you said you haven't detected any additional sagging since the original incident. How comfortable are you that, uh, that it's not going to sag further you know, in the future here over the next few days? Well, I guess initially the first few readings are what made me start to feel more comfortable. I guess if we, as we go on with the time in another you know, 6, 12, 24 hours, obviously the longer it goes on, the more comfort we have. But um, at this point, we're still watching it and, and being cautious. Uh, I guess it sounds a little trite, but maybe so far so good. I believe they're being taken about every six hours right now. Um, as I mentioned, we're currently using lasers uh, technology to, to get the elevation of those top of the caps. So um, it does rely a little bit on good visibility. So things like fog and darkness does impair that a little bit. But uh, we're getting them basically every six hours when we can. The latest information we had as of, uh, I got just shortly before uh, we started this conference, was that it had and we're continuing to watch it. Uh, the fog slowed us down a little bit this morning, but we did get crews out there, and they did get their measurements. Who had a question? Sir? It, you've said a couple of times here that you're, you're not sure yet that it's stable. So how do you justify allowing ships to go underneath it into the port? I'm not sure I follow that. The part of the structure that we're in question here is, is not, I don't want to say it's nowhere near the port, but it, it's a separate unit that's separated by hinges in the superstructure, which really kind of isolates the problem, which in a way is good. But the, the issue that we're talking about is a fair distance away from the port area of the structure. If, if there were issues, if obviously we shut this bridge down very quickly, and, and again, I reminded you again, uh, people should stay away from the bridge, should be walking on the bridge. Uh, safety is our number one concern. Um, safety, safety for our crews who are working out there as we, we look into this issue, and safety for the public, and certainly safety for, um, I, I, I think there's a train, I believe, that runs under that bridge on the other side. I think, I know they're shipping, and we've looked into this, and again, if there was any issue we felt that was going to be a danger to shipping, we'd certainly shut it down. We'd certainly ask them not to ship under the bridge. So we believe that it's that part of it is safe. Go ahead. Can the uh, Brown County dump trucks that are coming in and out of your access gate on Quincy Street, is that in support of the effort? And what are those guys doing to help you out? I'm not familiar with that. Uh, are you familiar with that, Tom? Just basically upgrading the access road in there to help with future notification. Right. It's, as I understand it, it's, uh, as I explained yesterday, it's very difficult to get to these piers. And um, we've asked the county to basically expand the path so that it's easier for our crews to travel to and from uh, the pier and do our work. They're lane gravel. They're lane gravel, aren't I thought yeah. they were lane gravel, right? Yeah, they're lane gravel. Have you guys taken into consideration traffic problems on Packer Day? Well, anytime we have a Packer game, uh, on our best day, we, you know, it's a lot of traffic. You know, and this is Green Bay. So uh, Packer fans, they have a lot of patience. They, they know to start early. They know to get in and out. You know, they, they, they know their way to and from the game. Um, I don't know that the Leo Frigo Bridge plays that big a role in, with that Packer traffic. I think they're either moving north into Door County or south towards Milwaukee on 41 or I-43, or they're taking 41 north, or they're heading west on, say, 29 or 54. So I don't know that the Leo Frigo Bridge plays that big of a role for Packer games, except maybe for the movement of local traffic. But anybody who's been in Green Bay on Packer Day knows that there's a lot of traffic, it's slow going, and they got to plan their routes. Are there any plans to put up any more detour uh, signs? I guess, and how far do they go out? Uh, Randy, are there any plans for any de more detours? Yeah, at this time, all we're doing is we're, you know, continuing to monitor the two routes that we talked about yesterday, and I re reiterated before. Um, we, have, we have done some simple things as trim trees so, so motors can see the actual sign that's behind a branch within the city. Uh, we're, some, some of our signs are faded. We're replacing some of them. Um, but our two routes, 41 and 172, is the freeway, freeway route 
and then within the city, it's, it's uh, on the north end um, using uh, Atkinson and Webster. So other than that, at this time, traffic seems to be moving pretty, pretty decent, and we're going to just continue to monitor, see if we need to make any further adjustments. I guess you have to go further out, you know, further up on the highway, maybe even to a different county to put up signs, and other signs coming in. Well, and, and that's, yeah, we can think about do we need to do things as far south as Milwaukee um, or Appleton or Oshkosh. To this point, we don't know that we need to do that. Um, the message is, is clearly getting out to northeast Wisconsin and the state, for that matter, to, to realize that there are some impacts going on here and you need to pay attention and plan your route accordingly. Randy, I was downtown yesterday and there a big ship was coming through. It sucked right during rush hour. Uh, I know that's a little bit more city streets, maybe not your guys' realm, but is there any way of changing like you know, train patterns or something like that because there's more people going through the downtown? Because I think there was like three trains that came through during rush hour plus the shift. I mean, it, it was hell down there. Yeah, I wish I could have an answer for you. Um, we haven't today made a contact with the railroad. Um, it's something I can discuss with, with the Green Bay um, Police Department and see if there is any potential for that. Um, history shows that when the trains come, the trains come. And unfortunately, when the train goes through, everyone has to wait. So we'll continue to monitor, and if there's something that we can do to help alleviate that problem, especially during those rush hour times, we'll do that. But I'm not convinced that we're going to be able to do that. I have a couple questions for Bill from one of my coworkers. I, can I just add one more thing? Sure. Just, well, actually, two more things. First of all, to your Packer question. Um, one of the things that we do here in Green Bay is we put out a traffic a Packer traffic advisory and that goes out typically Thursday morning statewide obviously we're going to be carrying a lot of traffic information in that release particularly with the Leo Frigo bridge being shut down um, the question about the, the the backups and such of course we can talk with shipping we can talk with um, the railroads and I'm sure Randy will look into that um, but this is another example of this is difficult, we realize, for the people of Green Bay. This is intrusive, there's no question about it, particularly after all the work we've been having out on, on 41. Um, we ask for your patience, and there is, we, when we say we want to ex expedite this, there is a sense of immediacy for this project, there really is. Go ahead, Jennifer. Um, yeah, so from, a couple, from one of my coworkers, this is a question that really is probably for Bill. Um, do all of the H pilings that support every pier, do they all go to the bedrock? They, the, the design assumption was that they would drive to bedrock. So far, what we've looked at for this particular pier, the, the boring records appear that they did go to bedrock or to a very, very dense layer that would support the piles similar to bedrock. Okay, and the H pilings, they're made, are they made out of steel? Correct. Okay, is there any concern about corrosion? That's certainly something that we'll be looking at as we move forward. What's the danger point? You know, that, that bridge can only sag so much on the pier right now. It's not moving anymore, of course. Sure. How much more could that, you know, fall versus you're dealing with structural issues for that section? Right. You know, that's kind of isolated. That's one of the things we'll be looking at right away is to see if any of the steel has gone beyond its yield point and potentially damaging the steel such that we can't use it in the future or um, to a point where it could be you know near failure we don't think it's anywhere near that at this point but it's one of the things we'll be looking at we're going to take a couple more questions and then we'll be available to talk to you individually go ahead bill when you said earlier that the sagged area is isolated structurally from the rest of the bridge do you mean to say worst case scenario it continues sagging that there's no danger to the rest of the bridge well it could extend slightly beyond where the hinges are, but hinges basically are a discontinuity in the, in the steel girders of the superstructure. What so is discontinuity? Discontinuity means one, it stop, stops and starts with basically pins that hold it together and allows that portion to move kind of separately from the rest of the structure. The bridge itself is broken up into a number of units with these uh, pins and, and expansion joints in between. So this is one sort of isolated portion between those hinges. Have you all looked at soil conditions yet? Got any excavating or anything else to go down and see whether there might have been shifting or some other change in the soil conditions? We haven't done anything as far as excavation, and we're going to hold off on that till we feel confident that, that the issue is stable. Um, we have looked in the area of the pier that's settled to look to see if there's any kind of bulging that would indicate that soil has pushed off out from under. 
um, and haven't been able to see anything. But I'll, I'll clarify that by saying it's, it's a, a rough area in there with a lot of high grass and it, it's not real visible. But um, our first view of it is we can't see anything that's pushed out from underneath. Let's have another question and then we'll call it. Anybody have another question? Can you talk about the, how many, who's here from the FHA? You know, how many personnel, how much resources has the FHA put into this? Or how, what do they have here in town? Number wise, uh, what have we got? Probably half a dozen something like that and and again as I mentioned they've committed to bring in whatever resources we feel we need so they're very committed to helping us you know as we move forward with this well, that's a good question I'll follow up on that and uh, we'll get the information out for you is there a chance they might join you in some future briefing uh, there is that chance um, not today uh, possibly in the future it depends what we find out there Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be available to talk to you individually. Uh, appreciate you coming. And again, like I said, uh, there's no news conference scheduled for tomorrow, probably sometime next week, probably early next week. Thank you very much. Hey guys, the, the video is almost done. Uh, he just texted me. He said he's still probably about 20 minutes before it's all dubbed on, like dubbed down. Sure. Kim, is this okay? Those of you that need video, go ahead and uh, see Randy from the video.